Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about whether or not the Mazda Miata is the best starter sports car for anyone looking to get into this hobby, getting into the sport. And we're going to take the car for a drive, we're going to talk about what makes this car so fun to drive, and we're going to look at kind of my experience owning many many different cars in the space, driving literally almost every available sports car, let's say under the 50,000 mark, which is probably where you need to be if you're starting with a car, and I would say even cheaper is better for your first car. And I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on whether or not the Miata can provide everything you need in a beginner sports car and really get you engaged in the driving experience, really learn how to work on cars, how to drive cars, like what makes cars fun, and more importantly, help you figure out what niche of this industry is what you appreciate. And I think the Miata, and I think the Miata at its essence provides that juxtaposition that's important in figuring out you know where is your you know joy in this hobby if you're not familiar this is my 2008 mazda miata this is the nc generation i did consider an na or nb generation this just had no rust on it was a really good deal so i pulled the trigger and i like the i like the nc i like the way that the car was built it looks much similar to like the rx8 which is something that when I was young and getting into this hobby, I almost considered the RX-8 as my beginner sports car. I ended up with a Genesis Coupe, and in reality, I wish I had ended up with this car. It would have given me a better idea of what I was looking to in the long run. But in the short term, the Genesis Coupe did what it needed to do and kind of got me excited about the sport and just the hobby in general. But I think the Miata would have been a better experience having, if I were able to go back, I would have learned a lot more and I probably would have been you know, that first four or five years of the journey within the hobby, I would have gotten through a lot more cars and done a lot, a lot of things different. So in this video, hopefully I'm gonna help save you guys that time, get you stoked about this car. And more importantly, if you consider somebody, if you consider yourself as somebody that is an enthusiast, has had sports cars, thinks they know the world, at least watch this video and compare whether or not the experiences you've had are similar than this, and maybe you do what I do, is you know, when you're looking and you're getting another car, a daily driver, a weekend car, because you're working on a project or something like that, you consider adding a Miata to your driveway because of the sun, some of the things that it delivers at its core as a raw driving experience, and let's get behind the wheel and get this thing going, and uh, I'll talk to you while we drive it. We're finally in the car. This is the most important part of the video, you know, discussing whether or not this is the absolute best beginner sports car. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a little while, and one of the reasons I bought the Miata is I wanted to have the experience of owning the Miata because it's such a core uh, building block of a lot of people's automotive journey. So in an effort to further relate to my community and just the automotive community, I wanted to have some time behind this platform. So, you know, the driving experience and the experience in the car is what makes this car so pivotal in being a beginner sports car. And like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, if you feel like you're already within this community and you've had some sports cars and you think you're an expert, I think don't write off owning a Miata because I'm doing the same thing. I went back and I think what the Miata really does is it's a teaching tool. It really helps you identify what you actually appreciate in a sports car and what you're actually looking for. So the Miata isn't just the best sports, it's not just the best beginner sports car, but it's also a great way to reassess what you're looking for in a sports car if you're at a crossroads. Because what it does is it breaks down different parts of this, uh, you know, of this journey, of this platform, of this hobby. So let's get down to the core of it. Why is the Miata the best beginner sports car? So unequivocally, the first one is a raw driving experience. You're gonna get tactile sensation. You're gonna learn how to drive a manual on a five or six speed transmission. It's a very easy transmission to learn in. Part of that raw driving experience is the vibration that you're probably seeing in the camera right now as I go over rough roads. There is a very high level of, you know, road to car translation and feeling, which is very good when you're getting into, you know, the appreciation of cars, because that's ultimately what you're looking for. You're looking for this experience, this immersive experience. It's also very small and light, which actually leads to just a different relationship between your driving experience and the car itself, because you feel like you're, you know, closer with the car because there's not as much mass when you're doing things in this car to take away momentum. So if that makes any sense, momentum is lower because mass is lower, which means you experience more, if that makes sense. 
you have a higher relationship in your weight to the vehicle. So some of the things you do are experienced just differently. So even, even if you're saying, oh, I know what it feels like, I've driven a WRX, well, I'm telling you your perspective of what handling or you know, what it feels like to be this low on the ground and have this type of maneuverability just doesn't have the juxtaposing, you know, the comparable. So the big thing with the Miata and what makes it popular is it's not from a zero to 60 perspective fast, right? It's the quick car relative to the normal cars and normal line of cars. But the reality is what makes this car fun is the you don't need to slow down and turn. So what makes this a beautiful track car is you can carry your speed through turns and that's really where the adrenaline and the fun comes. And although it's quick, there's nothing better than the feeling of not having to slow down and being able to maintain power and speed through a turn because that's when you usually in a car have to slow down and then accelerate out of, and that's where you're starting to, you know, that's where the worry is. That worry is still there coming from a car that's faster. I can tell you that for a fact. But the reality is, is it's more of an adrenaline rush, so I'd say it's even more fun to drive. Tied with this amazing experience where you're gonna learn a lot about the platform, you're gonna have this raw driving experience, but you're also gonna learn a lot about the vehicle. It's a very simple vehicle. No turbocharger, you could put a turbocharger on it, but no turbocharger, very small engine, easy to work with, lots of room manual transmission, you're gonna get all the core aspects of this car. Parts are inexpensive, you can do the work on your own. It's been, a, it's been, this platform has been around for literally decades, so there's lots of resources. It's just an overall good platform to get your hands dirty in this sport as well. And then furthermore, I think the most pivotal aspect about all of this, kind of combined with the first two things, is the fact that this car is incredibly, ridiculously inexpensive to buy. For example, my 2008 Mazda Miata, which is an NC Miata, a third generation Miata, only cost me $8,000. I could have gone out and spent less money on an NA or NB Miata, which is a first or second generation Miata, and I would have had a very similar driving experience, maybe a few less bells and whistles and a little bit more rust. The reality is then the amount of money that I've spent to have this much fun is just crazy when you compare that to other cars in the market especially when the market's as crazy it is now you're just not going to get the same dollar you know smiles per dollar or whatever you want to call it so the amount of fun you're going to get for such little money with this car is reason enough to think about bringing this car into your driveway and especially if you're thinking about getting in the game don't spend twenty thousand dollars on a car that's only slightly faster than this and when you take it to a track will lose to this car even though that car has more horsepower because this car can maintain speed. So before you buy a car that doesn't fit the specific needs you're looking for, maybe spend a little bit less money on a car that will hold its value. This platform historically has held its value really well. If you've owned these, you owned one of these in 2014 compared to now, you'd have significantly more equity in your car than even the market inflation now. But with that said, the cost to get in this car and the amount of fun that you can have with the amount of dollars spent is just absolutely ridiculous. So that alone is reason enough for this to be a perfect entry level sports car. So let's recap. You're thinking about getting a car or you're at a loss of whether you want a muscle car, a rally car, a GT car, something like this. You're not sure what you want. Well, this is a car that will get down to the core of it, right? Doesn't have a lot of power, but it's still quick. So you'll know right away that relative to being able to take turns without slowing down, ready, we'll do that right now. I'm at 200 speed, I'm taking almost a 90 degree turn. I accelerated through it, right? It didn't even have to slow down. As you could tell, not a lot of body movement there. We were going 35 miles an hour and I took a turn that was just over an obtuse angle. But what it's really gonna do is it's gonna qualify the different aspects of what makes these cars interesting and you know interesting to own we're going to take another turn zero slowdown here we go absolutely no reduction to speed i accelerated the whole way through didn't even look like i was doing anything so the reality is is this car will help you figure out what's important with the next vehicle you own it's kind of like a stepping stone a lot of people find that they love these cars i've actually known actually most of the people that i know that own these cars you know, drive Miatas, own Miatas for the majority of their lives. The Miata is actually the car that they build and they own four, five, six of them, and it becomes a passion just because they are so fun to drive. So if you're not pleased with this driving experience, it will at least help you figure out what the next step is for you. 
But most importantly, it gives you a very draw, raw driving experience that you're not gonna find in a lot of other platforms. From an untuned or unbuilt perspective, this car is significantly more fun to drive than something like the BRZ. The BRZ is a much more expensive car. The equivalent purchase mileage and stuff for a BRZ compared to this, the BRZ, you know, I bought this for eight grand. I would have expected to spend $16,000, $17,000 on a BRZ that hasn't been tuned, a clean version. And that's probably with some rust, so maybe more without some rust. So the reality is, is this is a great entry-level sports car. One, because it's ridiculously fun to drive. It has all the creature comforts and it's inexpensive to own as long as you treat it well. And most importantly, it's just a car that will tell you more about what you're looking for in a car. It has all the essentials. It's a raw driving experience. It's a manual transmission. You know, it's small, it's tight. You can throw it around. It's just a lot of fun to drive. So that's my review. I do think it's the best, without a doubt, the best car to begin with.